We've got something great going on in our kitchen this morning. Some local goodness, guys. Oh, and Joe, you know I love that. We're here with Frank Nippenberg from Blue Moon Farm in Grand Bay. He has brought just all kinds of stuff. First off, these flowers. That's the first thing I noticed when I walked into the studio. Especially for women, nothing brightens your day more than walking in and seeing some flowers like this. Oh, we enjoy growing flowers. We have, we have a lot of surprises out at our farm. Well, let's first, before we get into what we're making today, which is actually no dough blueberry peach cobbler, we'll get into that in just a second. Let's talk about the farm a little bit. Okay. Well, my wife, Peggy, yeah. and I uh, started our blueberry you pick business about four years ago. We're in West Mobile, uh, a little bit off of New. Road, uh, you know, probably about 30 minutes from here, but 15 minutes from most West Mobile locations. We started off with the blueberry you pick, and then we started doing you cut flowers, and we offer those in uh, bouquets. We also mm. supply florists and weddings and so forth. And this year we have added our organic vegetables. That's awesome. And I'm not going to lie, I've heard a lot of people going out to your farm and a lot of people having a good time. And we do have to mention, that Peggy is here. She's just very camera shy. She's right around the curtain right over there. So she's here with you I this morning. I didn't say that, Peggy. She, he didn't <laughs> say that, Peggy. Absolutely not. You'll have to give her these flowers after we get done. So as far as the vegetables are concerned, we know you can pick blueberries. What kind of vegetables do you guys offer? Uh, we have the traditional summer vegetables, but we try to offer the seasonal favorites. We have eggplants right now. We have our summer squash. We have uh, our fresh eggs. We, oh, we have yeah. a lot of chickens. Uh, everything is organic. We're certified, naturally grown, and we didn't really start out that way, but our customers with our blueberries insisted on organic right. blueberries, and then customers started asking for vegetables, and we started that this year. And you know, a big trend that I've seen, Frank, with a lot of people who I know who've been to your farm is they take their kids out there. They take their kids out there. They let them pick the blueberries. Are you seeing a lot of that? Are you seeing a lot of that with the vegetables? Oh, we, we see it. We have a lot of farm animals. It's it's a nice country family experience. And you know what? If if the business was, you know, put aside, we would just do it for meeting the kids and the right. families. It's oh, a good, that's good great. opportunity. Well, cool. Well, you can take your kids out to the farm, let them pick vegetables. Let them pick blueberries. Now we have to talk about what we're making this morning, which is a no dough cobbler. Are no dough cobblers just as good as the dough cobblers? Is oh, that sure. what I would call them? Dough cobblers? And, uh, and uh, you know, it really has a crust still. So when we say no dough, we kind of think, well, there's no crust. Right. It's just that you don't have the traditional dough type crust that you have to roll out and you have to spend a lot of time working on. This has got a self rising type crust. Okay. Uh, it makes its own crust. It's more of a cake like crust. And it's a very, very simple but delicious recipe that anybody can use for their summer blueberries. Well, perfect. So let's talk about the ingredients that we have. And if you want to follow along as well, we've put that on our website, fox10tv.com, where you can see all of the ingredients that we're about to talk about. Okay. Well, it's got seven basic ingredients. So let's talk about the two main ingredients first. Okay. Uh, we use three cups of fresh or frozen blueberries. Okay. And, you know, if someone did not get out to you pick this year and they don't have gallons of blueberries in their freezer right. ready to go, you know, go to the local store, find some frozen blueberries, you know, uh, because they're so healthy for you. Uh, but definitely try this recipe. But it takes three cups of blueberries. Uh, you can pick up some frozen peaches at your local store, three cups of frozen peaches. Uh, the cake-like component uh, takes uh, two cups of flour, okay. one and a half cups of sugar on the beginning part of the recipe. Uh, it takes two teaspoons of of baking powder and it takes one cup of milk. Uh, when we put the berries and the peaches in at the end, we coat them with sugar so there's another cup of sugar that, that goes in the ingredients. Well, perfect. We have everything set up and ready to go. And hey, they, do they still have time to pick blueberries? We're finished. Unfortunately, okay. our blueberry season is over. Uh, on Saturdays, we have our you cut flowers, okay. but we added thornless cultivated blackberries 
berries to oh, our wow. farm. Okay. So when they come out on Saturdays to get their flowers, they can also pick some blackberries where well, they're still in season. That's great. Check out their farm. Of course, we're going to get more information on the farm and we're going to get started on the recipe in our next cooking segment. Joe, this looks absolutely great and I'm really tempted to take this to my desk. Back in our Studio 10 kitchen set with Frank from Blue Moon Farm. And we've talked last segment about all the wonderful things you brought here this morning. Now it's time to get some stuff going. So what do we need to do here, Frank? Okay. Well, this is one of my favorite recipes. That's why we chose it. We also make a uh, pound cake with blueberries in. Ooh. And I wanted to mention that because I, I wanted to give some tips to, to your uh, viewers. Uh, it's easy to, to preserve blueberries by freezing them uh, when, they're, when they come you fresh picked, you should just basically put them right in the freezer bags. Okay. Don't wash them. Uh, and then when they come out of the freezer, they'll last a year in the freezer. Just give them a good wash in a colander and get them ready to go and use them in, in your recipe. That when, is a great tip. When right you there. use blueberries in a cake like recipe, mm -hmm. usually you want to take about a tablespoon of flour and just kind of mix it into the blueberries. And that keeps the blueberries from sinking to the bottom of the cake. Ah. So Oh, okay. Nice little tip that we need to think about. Now, this is a super simple recipe. It's a delicious recipe. We start out with a cup of butter, two sticks of melted butter in a three quart baking dish. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that, we're going to make our uh, batter. We start out with our batter with our two cups of flour mm -hmm. and one and a half cups of granulated sugar. We have two teaspoons of baking soda, and we're going to kind of mix that together. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add our one cup of milk, and this is going to make our batter. And you know, I have been accused of making a mess in the kitchen, <laughs> and I purposely try to find recipes where I don't need to use beaters, and I don't need to have a lot of bowls and, and things to leave a mess or, or to have to wash. And this, this is real easy. I'm not using a whisk. I'm just using a spatula. It's just easy to, to mix this batter up. Mm -hmm. And... One Here tip, I though, this, it's great that this one doesn't make that much of a mess, but, but if you do make a mess, I've always heard that if you're the one doing the cooking or baking, it's, it's whoever else is in the house needs to clean up. What, oh. do you, what do you think about that rule? Well, I think that's an excellent rule. <laughs> You know, my wife Peggy uh, insists on doing most of the cleaning. Okay. And I kind of got fired from the cleaning process because I made comments like, why do you have to wash the bottom of a dish or, <laughs> or a bottom of a pot? And I understand that that's a necessary component of cleaning up. Well, what you're teaching me right now is notes of things that I'm actually going to say because I'd like to get fired from the cleaning process. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next step is that we take our batter and we just go ahead and put it right into our melted butter. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to stir. We're going to just kind of push it around a little bit. But uh, this, this is going to you know, make that nice cake-like batter that's going to be part of our recipe. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so once we have that, our very next step is that we're going to take our berries and we're going to take our peaches and we're doing three cups of each. Right. Uh, I kind of like this little frozen bag from, from the big box store because it has exactly three cups of, of fruit in it. And we take our additional one cup of sugar and we mix this together. Sounds good. And it, yeah, it's it nice when things are convenient as well. And that's, uh, you're combining the best of both worlds there. You've got the fresh, live blueberries, and then you just got a quick and easy peaches. <laughs> and so then we take, uh, with, with no great system in mind, we take our, our fruit and we just spread it out. And we're being careful not to, not to try to, you know, push it down into the batter. The batter is actually going to come up, and it's just going to make a wonderful brown crust at the end. Now, you do need a three-quart baking dish. Anything smaller is not going to hold this. Our original recipe was for four servings. Okay. And I thought, who in the world is going to make a cobbler with three to four servings? Right. So we changed the recipe using a three-quart baking dish. So this is a six to eight uh, serving cobbler. 
There you go. And so there it is, and it's ready to go into a 350 degree oven for about 55 minutes. 55 minutes. Until it browns. All right, so we'll check in on the finished product in just a little while here. Looks fantastic. Great job, Frank. First, we need to check in on the important forecast for this weekend. A lot going on, Chastity.